We are officially inside the final 24-hour window. Tomorrow, December 19th, at approximately 6.02 a.m., UTC, 3i Atlas reaches its closest point to Earth, the closest geometry we're going to get during this entire passage. For months, we've watched this visitor slide across the inner solar system, frame by frame, update by update. But this is the moment the whole story has been leaning toward. The peak, the closest approach, the last clean chance for our instruments to pull real information out of a world that was born around a different star. Right now, as you're watching this, 3i Atlas is still extremely far away in everyday terms, on the order of hundreds of millions of miles. But in astronomical terms, this is close enough that the best observatories we have can begin doing something that feels almost impossible. Not just seeing it, but sampling it remotely, measuring its gas output, reading its chemistry, tracking how its dust behaves under solar wind, watching how its coma changes hour by hour as the distance counter drops. If you open NASA's tracking tools and watch the numbers update, it's almost unsettling how fast the gap closes. Thousands of miles shaved off as the clock moves. It makes the event feel real in a way charts don't because this object is not orbiting us. It isn't captured. It is passing through at high speed on a path that carried it through the interstellar dark for a time longer than human history. And in just a few hours, it will be as close as it will ever get. You can feel the excitement in the astronomy community right now because this isn't just another comet you casually spot once in your life. This is a rare high velocity interstellar visitor, a physical piece of another star system that we can't travel to, can't sample directly, can't touch. And yet for one narrow window, we can still learn from it because light carries information, gas carries information, spectra carry information. A faint smudge in the sky becomes a chemical fingerprint. If you've been here from the start, you already understand how big this is. And if you're just joining now, you picked the most important moment to arrive because the next 24 hours are when the best data comes in, when the best images come in, when the story either becomes clearer or even stranger. And that brings us to the latest detail everyone keeps asking about, the tail. Normally, a comet approaches the sun, heats up, releases gas and dust, and the solar wind shapes that material into a tail that points away from the sun. That's the simple picture most of us learned, but 3i Atlas has shown a secondary feature that looks wrong at first glance, a sharp spike of dust that appears to point sunward. People call it an anti-tail, and the name alone makes it sound like the comet is breaking physics. In reality, an anti-tail is usually a viewing angle phenomenon. It's caused by heavier dust particles that don't get blown back, as easily settling into the comet's orbital plane like a thin sheet. From specific geometries, Earth sees the dust sheet edge on, and it can look like a sunward tail. It's a classic trick of perspective, and it tends to show up exactly when the geometry becomes just right, which is the kind of geometry we're entering right now as we approach closest approach. So the anti-tail isn't necessarily the smoking gun people want it to be, but it is still important because even when the explanation is natural, the measurement is valuable. It tells us about dust size distribution. It tells us how heavy particles behave. It tells us whether this object is producing unusually large grains and what that implies about the environment it formed in. And the tail isn't the only surprise. Back in late November, observers began reporting something visually striking. The coma took on a vivid green hue, not a subtle tint, a real emerald glow. Spectroscopy points to diatomic carbon, C2, fluorescing under sunlight. In other words, sunlight hits these molecules in the vacuum of space, and they re-emit light in the green part of the spectrum. That glow matters for one simple reason. Carbon chemistry is a major ingredient in the story of life. A carbon-rich comet is not proof of anything by itself, but it is a reminder of how the universe distributes building blocks. The same kinds of molecular pieces that exist here exist out there. And when an interstellar visitor shows up with strong carbon signatures, it forces a bigger thought. The raw ingredients for complex chemistry might be common across the galaxy. One of the debates happening right now is why 3i Atlas seems so active compared to our first famous interstellar visitor. That earlier visitor appeared drier, more ambiguous, more quiet. 3i Atlas, by contrast, is active, gassy, chemically loud. It behaves like a comet in the broad sense, but some reported ratios, like unusually high carbon monoxide levels, hint at formation in a colder environment than the comets that formed closer to our sun, a region where volatiles can remain trapped 
where ice chemistry stays different, where the flavor of the material is not the same as the material we're used to sampling in our own backyard. And this is why the observation campaign happening right now is so intense, because this isn't a one agency moment. This is a global moment. Across the next day, a massive network of telescopes and instruments are pointed at a single patch of sky. You've got optical observatories, infrared observatories, radio listening campaigns, spectroscopic campaigns, and space-based assets pulling from angles we can't get on the ground. Even when agencies don't announce every detail publicly, the practical reality is simple. When a rare interstellar visitor shows up and it's in the best geometry window, the world watches. And one of the most fascinating measurements being discussed is the high energy environment around the comet. X-ray observations can reveal how neutral gas from a comet interacts with the solar wind. It sounds counterintuitive, comets glowing in X-rays, but it's a real phenomenon tied to charge exchange, and it allows scientists to estimate how much gas is being released. When people talk about a halo on the scale of hundreds of thousands of kilometers, that's not a sci-fi shield. It's a signature of interaction, a way of measuring the invisible. At the same time, infrared observatories are valuable because they can look through dust and study ices and volatile chemistry more directly. Water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methanol. These are the kinds of molecules that tell you where and how the object formed. And the more precise those measurements become during closest approach, the more useful the sample becomes for understanding protoplanetary disks around other stars, those swirling nurseries where planets are born. And then there's perspective. When you observe from Earth, you get one line of sight. But when an object passes through the solar system, spacecraft around other planets can observe it from different angles. That means tail geometry becomes three-dimensional instead of a flat picture. It means we can compare what the tail looks like from our side to what it looks like from another vantage. It's the difference between seeing a shadow and seeing the shape that casts it. So that's the science side. That's the big picture. Now here's the practical question that always comes next. How can you take part in this moment? The good news is you don't need a billion dollar telescope to feel connected to it. There are live streams. There are coordinated amateur networks. There are observers who will be imaging it continuously through the closest approach window. And if you do have a telescope, especially with a camera capable of longer exposures, this is a rare now or never opportunity. But I need to set expectations honestly. This is not a naked eye comet for most people. It's faint, it's small. It's not a blazing object dominating the sky. You're looking for a dim, fuzzy patch. The kind of thing that becomes real only when you know what you're looking at. Under dark skies, with a strong enough aperture, it can appear as a small, soft glow. Sometimes with a greenish tint, depending on your setup and conditions. And yes, it can feel surreal when you realize what you're actually seeing. Photons that left a nucleus formed around another star system, now reaching your eyes from your own backyard. And here's something else that makes this event feel alive. Speed. 3i Atlas is moving fast enough that, through a telescope, you can sometimes see it shift relative to background stars over short intervals. That's when it stops being an image and becomes a moving presence, a traveler, a real object crossing the sky rather than a static dot. After the closest approach moment passes tomorrow morning. The story changes tone. The approach becomes an exit. 3 Eye Atlas begins pulling away, receding from Earth, receding from the sun, heading back toward the cold, quiet, interstellar dark. Over the coming months, it crosses deeper outward paths, eventually becoming too faint for most instruments to follow easily. And then it becomes what it was before it ever entered our sky, a drifting object between stars carrying its chemistry through the long night. The reason scientists care so much about this day is that the data captured in a narrow observation window like this doesn't just get used once. It gets studied for years. It becomes a reference point. It becomes a rare sample in the archive of human knowledge because we can't bring it home. We can't land on it. We can't scrape it. But we can still learn. We can learn what kinds of molecules exist in other star systems. We can learn what normal looks like when the material didn't form here. We can learn whether the ingredients that help build complexity are common. And we can learn how different the universe can be while still following the same physical rules. And that is why your attention matters. Science moves forward because curiosity is stubborn. Because we look up and we refuse to accept that we are limited only to what is near. 
Watching an interstellar visitor pass our home reminds us how small we are and how powerful we can be when we coordinate, share data, and build instruments that can read the universe from millions of miles away. So as we count down these final hours, I want to hear from you. Where are you watching from? What part of the Three Eye Atlas story has been the most fascinating to you so far? The anti-tail geometry, the green coma and carbon chemistry, the idea that this object formed around a different star, or simply the speed and the scale of it, the fact that a traveler can cross our sky and be gone again before most people even realize it happened? Drop your location and your thoughts in the comments. I'll be watching the updates through the night, tracking the latest observation reports as they come in. And the moment the clearest, closest approach images start appearing, I'll be back with a new update to break down what we're seeing and what it means. Thank you for being part of this final approach window. Clear skies, and I'll see you on the other side of closest approach.